Dude, what scotch should we review today? I don't know, dude. I don't know what scotch. <laughs> Japanese whiskey? Yeah! Wait, how'd you get into my house? I broke in. Welcome back to Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans. I'm Steven. I'm Alec. And I'm Will. And today we review Nika Coffee Green Japanese Whiskey. So, this is a Japanese whiskey coming from Nika. Uh, it is their coffee green whiskey and it comes out at 45% and $70. Interesting fact, the coffee in the name doesn't actually come from coffee at all. It this is, is still F-S-U-I. Whatever, not even spelling. I'm spelling. I thought it, I thought it had coffee related to the flavor. I did and too. And that's why it was called it. But it's because of the still that it's made off of. So interesting fact. Well, let's go ahead and get on the nose. And we'll let you know what we think about it. It's got a little florally bit to it, but also ooh, like some good cherries in there. Yep. Yeah. Some strawberries. Oh yeah, actually no, strawberry cherry. Watermelon. A little bit of both. Yeah, I get watermelon. Fun. I get cherry. Yeah. Cherry all the way. Mm -hmm. I always get cherry when I drink this. <sighs> cherry or pine? I don't know about pine. You saw that? Yeah, I've Actually, never thought yeah. about pine, oh, but as soon as you like said yeah. pine, my brain was like unlocked another level. Pine. Yeah. Level up. Well, like, that's what I that, that's what I like about this. Like the more you drink it, the more you get all the flavors. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. I I haven't had this in a while, but when I first got home, it was like all this and a few other whiskeys were like all I drank. And the more that you drink it, the more the the more information, the more. The more the aroma it reveals yeah. itself. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's a very, very sweet, simple, kind of like sweet, light, sweet light. Light, light it's, flavor it's, profile. It's definitely light, and what's cool about this, the thing I like about it, there's not one palette that's gonna overpower uh, everything. So the thing I don't like about some bourbons or whiskeys or scotches is that you'll have one flavor profile that just overdoes every other profile. This one is kind of, you can kind of taste everything. Yeah, it's a melon melon melon. Thing. Yeah, it does. Has a very good collection. And this is, this is good to drink straight. It's good for mixers. I've never really done it for mixers because I just... We don't do mixers here. Thank you. Yeah, we don't do that. We don't do mixers. So we drink you, everything straight. Yeah, you can. Yeah. That's so, what I'm saying. Another now? Mm. Graham crackers. Graham really? crackers. Like Teddy Grahams? Like honey graham oh, crackers? Oh, you're right. I can well, get I think that's more honey. Yeah, that's honey for sure. But yeah, it has well, like yeah, a slight bready kind of It has like too. a bready graham yeah. cracker yeah. characteristic. It's the bread. Like the, te the Teddy Grahams, because it's like a super sweet, obnoxious yeah. graham cracker. It's bread, honey, cherries. I didn't get watermelon from it. I've never gotten watermelon. That's I get the strawberries for sure. It's a strawberry cherry flavoring for sure. Yeah, it's like strawberry like... I don't get strawberry, strawberry honey, toasted bread. Like, I don't know. You toast some bread and you lather some honey and some strawberry jam on it. Maybe, yeah, I would also I say cherry I, jam, like a mix yeah. of strawberry and cherry jam. Yeah, I, I don't know if COVID just ruined my senses, but I'm not going to smell like that at all. And yeah, well, get out of here. <laughs> all, right, <laughs> all right, on the palate. Yep. yep. Okay, I can get the graham cracker thing on the palate. Yep. Definitely on the palate, graham cracker. Yeah, it loses a lot of the, like, fruitier characteristics and it gets a little bit darker more bready and earthier yeah. like brightier as yeah. it hits the palate it's kind this of is though. this isn't a smoky one at no all. this is, is it's the, not supposed to be peated though right no okay yeah no, it's, not. Uh, mm. it's definitely it's not smoky it's definitely more of a bread yeah yeah, it's, bread area. yeah. it's like this super sweet simple like vanilla graham cracker floral on the palate. A little bit of spicy, like a little bit of cinnamon on it. But yeah, no, I, de I, I definitely taste, this. I definitely taste the cinnamon. It's just one of those things that gets lost in all the other. Right. Uh, but it's there, it just, it's there yeah, when you're, it. well, it's there when you're tasting it. It's not there when you're smelling it. Like yeah, you have yeah. a completely different palate See, when you're smelling I it. I really like whiskeys that have that ability though, where they can be totally different from nose to palate. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah, because it catches you off guard a little bit. I lost yeah. the fruits though. The only mm -hmm. thing on this is like a white cherry, like a subdued white cherry. Is on I don't know if I can even get that. Yeah, because there really isn't any more of the fruitiness. Well, I'm, you, also, you, I'm hunting yeah. for some fruits. I know you're hungry, man. You're always hungry. 
Not bad though. I'd say finish is moderate. For 45%, I'm pretty impressed with the finish because typically anything under 50, I don't get a really good. Yeah. There's like, not a lot of finish. there's not a lot of burn to this either. No, no. That's, but yeah, it's nice how this actually has more flavor towards the end than the beginning, I think. Yeah, the finish, it just like it nose dives into the super bready graham cracker characteristic. Maybe a little bit of brown sugar about mid palate on. A little but bit. it's not it's not super sweet. It's like it just like yeah, a little good. dusting of brown sugar on top of like a graham cracker or something like that. I can see that. It's definitely not a dessert whiskey or anything. No, it's not super desserty. It's it's on the on the nose is super floral, fruity, palette, it just turns very like ready graham cracker characteristics. Yeah. A little bit of spices. Viscosity is lackluster. Yeah, there, I mean, it's not viscous, yeah, but I mean, it had light kind of, you know, feelings off of the nose and on the palate, I'm not surprised, but it's not a bad thing yeah. either. So, that being said, obviously we know Japanese whiskey, it's this weird market of the demand far more than scotch or bourbon or any other American whiskey. That's mostly just based yeah. on supply. Yeah. The, um, the supply doesn't quite meet the demand, so right. price points yeah. are a little bit higher. This is true. So seventy dollars for that. What do you grade this? I think seventy for what you got it out here because in Connecticut this is would not go for seventy. This is a ninety dollar bottle. Oh, yeah, Connecticut. Well, yeah, God, I'm so glad we live in Arizona. I know. It smells a lot. Yeah. So I, you know, I know where to get this for probably eighty dollars, but seventy is a steal on this. Yeah. Post taxes, it was like seventy five percent. Not bad. Yeah, that's not that's not terrible. Right. Um, but at seventy dollars. This is definitely different from other Japanese whiskeys that I've had. Um, I would say probably like a B, B plus. Okay. I mean, I, I only say that because of how much I like Japanese whiskeys. This isn't my favorite Japanese whiskey, and the only reason it's not my favorite Japanese whiskey is just the price tag. I think the the hype around Japanese whiskeys in general and the lack of uh, Japanese whiskeys in the market right now is just. Um, inflated the price tag. So that's the only reason I really hit it. It would be, an, if this was a $40 bottle, I, this would get it. There's there's so many bottles out there that if they were just drop 10, 20 bucks, they'd jump a letter. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. This is one yeah. of those where I think the flavor profile for me is twice the actual price point I want to pay for it. Yeah. But I'm also, I like darker, richer flavors. I like more proof and that's kind of where I live. So when I'm spending $70, I kind of expect peat smoke or, um, you know, so really like some higher proof, flavoring. some robust, some crazy yeah. flavorings. So given I'm pretty new to Japanese whiskey as a whole, not whiskey tasting in general, but Japanese whiskey, I'm personally, you're going to give it a B, B plus. I'm giving it a C minus. C minus? Yeah. <laughs> or no, not C minus. Apologies. C plus. C plus. Okay, that's fair. I, I was about to say C minus. I give it, that's from someone who doesn't. Right understand Japanese whiskey as much. I just don't like spending that kind of money for something that, to me, it, it was a little bit lackluster. I kind of, I lean more towards where Steve's at. I'm gonna say it's probably a B minus, uh, or sorry, yeah, B minus. Um, That's fair. Well, we have a good I mean, spectrum. I said C plus, he said, said, said B plus, you yeah. said B minus, so I think overall, if we're gonna round, I think that's what? It's a B minus. B minus? Yeah, I B think. B minus is fair. Don't worry, buddy. See, sketch agrees. <laughs> hey, yeah. it's a it's a B minus. Yeah, B minus is still a good that, grade. That that's means reputable. anything above a C in my book, I register as a win. It's definitely a good whiskey that I don't have a problem with having it. So, tipsy whiskey shenanigans as a whole with our new temporary member, occasionally coming in temporarily member, Will. We're going to give it a B minus. There you go. But that's a wrap for this video. Please do us a favor, like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, check out the Instagram and the Facebook, and we'll keep bringing you what we got. Uh, more Japanese whiskey on the roll. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you later.